In our last segment, we showed how we could use the Vertex router as well as method references to make our Vertex web application code more readable. Now let's investigate one of the other most important features of Vertex that allows us to run asynchronous code and use more capabilities of our multi-core servers and systems. Specifically, let's talk about the Vertex event bus. We mentioned in the first video that the smallest unit of productivity in Vertex is called a vertical. A vertical is guaranteed by default to be single threaded, but it runs in an asynchronous manner through the multi-reactor event loop. So traditional code is what we would call blocking code. That means when we make a method call or we do something in code, we block waiting on that execution to complete. All of the vertex code and all of the vertex APIs and methodology are based around asynchronous or callback based. Later we'll talk about how we can use ReactiveX and RxJava to create streams, but for now, what if this code where we're making our web response is actually something that takes time and we don't want it to tie up our vertical or our event loop. We'd want to distribute that work in a way where we can do multiple responses and requests in parallel to handle much more load given our hardware resources. The way we can do that in Vertex is we can deploy another vertical and in this case I'm going to create a new class and we're going to call it hello vertical and as with any other vertical we're going to say it extends abstract vertical and every vertical needs a, an entry point and that typically is public void start. And this is overridden from the abstract vertical type. Instead of answering our HTTP request or generating our hello messages directly in the main vertical, we can offload that work to this hello vertical by sending a message over the Vertex event bus. And the way we receive messages over the Vertex event bus is like this. We say Vertex dot event bus to get an instance of the event bus. And we register a consumer on an address. Addresses are arbitrary strings in Vertex. So I'm just going to say hello Vertex ADDR. And when I get a message via that event bus address, I want it to be handled using a message handler. And so in this case, the hello vertex address is just going to return hello vertex world, so we don't need to worry about the content of the message. So we can just say message.reply hello vertex world and that will send a reply over the event bus for our other endpoint we're going to take a parameter so we're going to say hello named address And we're going to extract the message body, which is going to be our name. The body in the message type is Java Lang object, but in this case, we know we're going to want to make it a string, so we're going to cast that to a string. And then we're going to say message.reply string.format hello percent s exclamation point 
and we're going to supply the name that we extracted from the message body. So now we have this vertical. We need to tell our application to deploy this vertical. So here, back in our main vertical, we're going to tell vertex to deploy our vertical by saying new hello vertical. If we wanted to, we can also pass some startup options to that vertical. We'll talk about that in a later segment. Now, once that vertical is deployed, we can then change our implementation of these methods to take advantage of moving that work off of the main vertical into the hello vertical. And the way we can do that is to say vertex event bus request. And the first instance, we're going to say hello vertex ADDR. Our message is just going to be a blank string because we don't care and then we need a handler. So we're going to get a reply message. And when we get that reply, we're going to send that as a response in our HTTP request. So we're going to say context.request.response.end and we're going to say reply.result.body. And again, we need to cast that to a string. Similarly, down here, we're going to say uh, vertex.eventbus.request hello.named.adr. The message is going to be our name and we need a handler for the reply. So we're going to say reply and put a lambda here. Say context.quest.response.end and it's going to be reply.result.body which we then cast to a string. And when we save this, again, our Vertex Maven plugin is going to recompile, redeploy everything for us. And we will see that it works just the same as before, but now we're taking advantage of multiple cores, multiple processing capabilities on the machine. Instead of just using a single thread on a single core, we're now using multiple threads on multiple cores. In the next segment, I'll tell you how you can set up verticals to be deployed multiple times within a single runtime so that you can really spread that work out.